After years or maybe even decades of masking, many neurodivergent people finally come to terms with who they are and decide that they're ready to take off the mask. They're ready to learn how to be themselves, society be damned. Let's talk about how to do it. Hi, my name is Megan and welcome to Neurodivergent Magic, the YouTube channel for accessible and relatable neurodivergent content. The key to unmasking is getting in touch with who you truly are and accepting that you cannot control other people's reactions to that true self. But doing that can be really complicated and much harder than it sounds. So I actually have a four step process for learning to unmask. Step number one is determining whether or not you are safe to unmask. There are a depressing number of environments in which it is not safe to be ourselves as neurodivergent folks. Some families are abusive and being yourself could result in dangerous abuse. Some workplaces are toxic and being yourself could result in you getting fired. Some schools have bullies and being your true self could result in dangerous bullying. I say this because I don't want you thinking that it's all rainbows and sunshine and unmasking is the most beautiful, amazing, essential thing in the world. The truth is a lot of us started masking for a reason. We learned to hide because we didn't feel safe. And I want to validate that. I want to let you know that it's okay that you decided to hide your true self and it makes sense in a lot of cases. If you're in an environment or in a culture where unmasking is just not really an option, then what I recommend is learning to unmask when you're alone. So many of us mask even when we're all by ourselves. We learn to hide ourselves from ourselves so that we're not tempted to be ourselves. I understand if you have to hide who you are around your family or your coworkers or your friends, but when you're all alone, I want you to start getting in touch with who you truly are. Because who you are is not bad. You deserve to know who you are and to appreciate the unique being that exists within you. I want you to get to know yourself because you deserve to know what a great person you are. Neurodivergence and all. This leads us right into step number two, which is getting in touch with who you are. There's a lot of ways to do this, but personally, I have a couple of recommendations. Number one is definitely journaling. Journaling is such a great self-reflective process and it helps you organize everything going on in your head. If you struggle with alexithymia, which is not always knowing what you're feeling or why you're feeling it and having trouble expressing those feelings, then journaling is a wonderful way to organize some of those thoughts and discover what emotion it is you're experiencing. If you have past trauma where you weren't allowed to feel certain emotions, like sad or angry, then it can really help to journal through those feelings and recognize, oh, they are safe. I am safe to feel these things. And overall, I just feel that journaling almost always leads to a better understanding of the self. The second thing I would actually recommend is tarot. Now bear with me. The reason I recommend tarot is because it's a very intuitive practice. You read the cards based on your intuition, based on what your gut is telling you that they mean. Sure, certain cards have certain meanings that are typically associated with them, but you get to make sense of how they apply to your life. If you're curious about reading tarot, but you're not sure how to get started, check out the description below. I will link an amazing book called Reading Tarot for Yourself. It should help you along your journey. Finally, the third thing that I recommend for getting to know yourself is getting in touch with other neurodivergent folks. There are so many neurodivergent communities out there on various social media platforms, and I really encourage you to join some of them. Talking to other neurodivergent folks is going to light up memories in your brain that remind you, oh, that's right, this is what I did before I started hiding. This is what I did and how I acted and who I was before I started masking. Step number three in this unmasking process is to start practicing unmasking. So first you figure out when and where it's safe to unmask, then you start getting in touch with who you are, and finally you start practicing in practical ways the unmasking process. This basically means being yourself even when it feels really scary. Personally, it's really hard for me to unmask in high pressure situations, so I'm not there yet. I'm starting simple and I recommend that you do too. The biggest thing I've started doing is I've started stimming when I'm alone. 
If you don't know, stimming is self-stimulatory behavior, and it's used to regulate the nervous system, to express emotion, and to process emotion. One of my favorite stims is hand flapping, so sort of going like this really fast. Um, <laughs> and I'm really embarrassed to do it around people. And so I've started doing it alone. And that has honestly been a huge step in the unmasking process for me. Even though I haven't really started unmasking around other people, simply unmasking around myself has been really powerful. Stimming makes me feel better. <laughs> it helps me process my emotions and feel what I'm feeling in my body, which is something I really struggle with. So right now, if you're watching this video, I want you to pick one thing you can do today to practice unmasking. Finally, step number four in the unmasking Unmasking process is to start talking about unmasking. Explain to your loved ones what masking is and why you did it for so long and how things might be different moving forward now. Talking about masking makes it way easier to stop doing it. And talking about unmasking makes it way easier to start doing that. It's way easier for me to stim around my husband now because I explained to him, hey, you might see me flapping my hands a lot more because I'm working on unmasking and being my true self. And just knowing that he knows he can expect this and he won't be worried or judge me for it is helpful. It makes it easier to do these things. Unmasking is a slow journey and it's okay for it to take you time, but it's something we have to be really intentional about and something that we should start doing today. So let me know in the comments what you're gonna do to start unmasking. Are you gonna read some tarot? Are you going to start stimming? What are you gonna do to start being your true self again. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next Tuesday.